this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate body mass index and we are starting right now. Hello, this is Dr. Dankwa and if this is your first time here and you'd like to learn pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks and strategies, then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So let's get right to it. I'm going to start off with a short no fluff overview on what body mass index is. We'll then take a look at the equations that you can use to calculate the body mass index. We'll then examine the various classifications associated with body mass index. And then we'll conclude with five strategically selected examples to illustrate a wide range of scenarios in which you may be required to calculate the body mass index. So overweight and obesity has been observed to be associated with higher mobility from a whole host of chronic degenerative diseases such as hypertension, type 2 diabetes, coronary heart disease, stroke, gallbladder disease, osteoarthritis, sleep apnea, and respiratory problems. It's also been associated with some types of cancer such as breast, prostate, and colon. In fact, obesity is also associated with complications of pregnancy, menstrual irregularities, stress incontinence, and psychological disorders such as depression. So the National Institutes of Health recommends three main considerations when assessing weight and health risk. And these three are body mass index, the waist circumference, risk factors for diseases and conditions associated with obesity. So in this video, we're just going to focus on body mass index, which is the BMI. So what is the body mass index? The body mass index is a convenient measure of overweight and obesity. And the BMI is often defined as the ratio of the weight in kilograms to the height in squared meters. So it typically has units of kilograms per meter squared. So while the BMI is a convenient measure of overweight and obesity, what it actually is, is it is an estimate of body fat and it's a good gauge of your risk for diseases that can occur with more body fat. And so the implication is the higher your BMI or body mass index, the higher your risk for chronic degenerative diseases, disease complications, and mortality. So while the BMI or body mass index is a good tool to assess weight and health risk, there are some limitations associated with the BMI. And one of the important limitations is it has a tendency to overestimate body fat in athletes and others who have a muscular build. The other limitation actually is it may underestimate body fat in older persons and others who have lost muscle. Right? So you want to be aware of these limitations even though the BMI is a good tool to assess weight and health risks. So that was a really quick overview on what body mass index is. And now the next thing we want to take a look at is the equations. Now the body mass index is actually a ratio of weight to height, the square of the height. And so there are two versions of the equation, one in metric units and the other in imperial units. So for the metric units, you have the BMI having units of kilograms per meter squared. And so that would imply that it's equal to the weight in kilograms divided by the square of the height in meters. So that would be the equation for BMI if you're working in metric units. Now, if you chose to work in imperial units, then your BMI still has units of kilograms per meter squared. However, your BMI is equal to the weight in pounds divided by the square of the height in inches times a factor, which is 703. And now the 703 is that conversion factor that takes you from the space and area of pounds per square inch to kilograms per meter squared. So those are the two equations and it's important to understand how both of them work so that you can easily use the right equation depending on the patient information that you have. That way you're able to get your answer accurately and expeditiously. So now that we've looked at the equations, when you have the body mass index, what does it mean? Let's take a look at the classification. So if the BMI is less than 18.5, then it indicates that the patient is underweight. A BMI from 18.5 to 24.9 indicates normal weight and then a BMI from 25 to 29.9 indicates overweight. So once you get above 29.9, which implies 30 or greater, you enter into the realm of obesity. Now, there are three different classes of obesity. And so it's important to understand what those classes are. A BMI of 30 to 34.9 
indicates class 1 obesity. Anything from 35 to 39.9 indicates class 2 obesity. And anything greater than or equal to 40 is class 3 obesity. Naturally, that's extreme obesity. Right, so it's important to understand what the numbers mean once you calculate the BMI. And anytime you calculate the BMI, it's important to refer to what the classification is so that you know whether you are underweight, normal, overweight, or obese. So we had a short overview of what body mass index is. We looked at the equations, we've seen the classifications. Now let's look at some examples. So here the question says calculate the body mass index for a patient who weighs 90 kilograms and is 1.63 meters tall. So the first thing that we want to do is take a look at the units of the anthropometrics. So now the units of the weight is in kilograms and the units of the height is in meters. So what that implies is we can make use of the BMI equation which is designed for metric units. And so we have BMI having units of kilograms per meter squared being equal to the weight in kilograms divided by the square of the height in meters. So now we can go ahead and substitute in the information. So BMI is going to be equal to 90 kilograms divided by 1.63 meters, all of that squared. So now we can take this a step further. And so now we have BMI being equal to 90 kilograms divided by 2.66 meters squared. So the 2.66 is coming from squaring the 1.63 in the previous step. So now that we have the 90 kilograms divided by the 2.66 meters squared, we can go ahead and simplify this ratio and you will end up with 33.83 kilograms per meter squared. So now that we've calculated the BMI of 33.83, what exactly does this number mean? So now we reference the classification chart and we notice that the 33.33 is between 30 and 34.9, which implies that this patient is obese and falls into the category of class 1 obesity. Let's take a look at another example. Here the question states, calculate the body mass index for a patient who weighs 67 kilograms and is 170 centimeters tall. So the first thing we want to do is take a look at the units of the anthropometrics that have been provided. Now the units of the weight is in kilograms and the units of the height is in centimeters. So to be able to calculate the BMI expeditiously, we would want to use the equation that is designed for metric units. But notice we need to convert the centimeters into meters for that to work. So we start off with the 170 centimeters and make use of the conversion factor that 100 centimeters is equivalent to 1 meter. The centimeters will cancel out and you end up with 1.70 meters. Now that implies that the patient's height is actually 1.70 meters. So now that we've converted the patient's height from centimeters to meters, we can make use of the BMI equation for metric units where BMI is equal to the weight in kilograms divided by the square of the height in meters. We can substitute the information. So now BMI is equal to 67 kilograms divided by the square of 1.70 meters. So that would imply that you have BMI being equal to 67 kilograms divided by 2.89 meters squared. And the 2.89 is coming from squaring the 1.70 in the previous step. So 67 divided by 2.89 is equal to 23.18. So we calculated the BMI for this patient to be 23.18. But what exactly does this mean? What we can do is we can reference the classification table. And we will notice that the 23.18 is between the 18.5 and the 24.9. And that actually signifies that this patient's weight is actually normal. So let's take a look at another example. In this example, the question says calculate the body mass index for a patient who weighs 165 pounds and is 66 inches tall. So when we take a look at the units of the patient's weight and height, we notice that the units of the weight is in pounds and the units of the height is in inches. So up till now, we've been using the version of the BMI equation, which is designed for metric units. Now we could still use that, but that would require that we do a lot of conversions. Rather, we want to use the BMI equation that is designed for imperial units. And so here the BMI is going to be equal to the weight in pounds divided by the square of the height in inches times the factor 703. 
And one reason we want to use this version of the equation is because it allows us to calculate the BMI expeditiously. So we can go ahead and substitute the anthropometrics into the equation. So the BMI is going to be equal to 165 pounds divided by 66 inches squared, all of that times 703. And so that implies that your BMI is equal to 165 pounds divided by 4356 inches squared times 703. Now the 4356 is coming from squaring the 66 in the previous step. So once you've done the math and simplification, you end up with 26.63. So now that we've calculated the BMI for this patient to be 26.63, what exactly does this number mean? The next thing we need to do is actually take this number, the 26.63, and juxtapose that with the classification table. And what we would notice is that the 26.63 is actually between the 25 and the 29.9 range, which indicates that this patient actually is overweight. Let's take a look at another example. Here, the question states, calculate the body mass index for a patient who weighs 144 pounds and is 5 feet 9 inches tall. So if we take a look at the anthropometrics of body measurements, what we notice is that the units of the weight is in pounds and the units of the height is in feet and inches. So what we want to do is make use of the BMI equation which is designed for imperial units. But we still need to convert the feet to inches to be able to more readily use that version of the equation. So we start off with the 5 feet and then we make use of the conversion factor that 1 foot is equivalent to 12 inches the feet cancel out and you end up with 60 inches. But you need to add the 9 inches to the 60 inches and so you end up with 60 inches plus 9 inches equals 69 inches and that implies that the patient's height is actually 69 inches. So we can now make use of the equation BMI equals weight in pounds divided by the height in inches all squared times 703. So we can now substitute the patient's information into the equation and so BMI is going to be equal to 144 pounds divided by 69 inches, all of that squared, times 703. And that would imply that your BMI is going to be equal to 144 pounds divided by 4761 inches squared. Now the 4761 is from squaring the 69 inches in the previous step. So once you've done the math and simplification, you end up with BMI being equal to 21.26. So now that we've calculated the BMI for this patient to be 21.26, what exactly does this mean? What we can do is we can take the BMI for this patient, which was the 21.26, and compare it to the classification table, and we will notice that the 21.26 is actually between the 18.5 and 24.9 range and that would imply or signify that this patient's weight is actually normal. Let's take a look at another example. Here the question is a little bit more involving than the previous four examples that we've looked at and the question actually states, an investigational drug for obesity is being dosed at either of two protocols. A. 7.6 mg per 0.5 BMI for persons with a BMI over 25 but less than 30 or B, 9.6 mg per 0.5 BMI for persons with a BMI greater than 30. In each protocol, the dose is equally divided and administered three times a day before meals. What would be the divided dose for a male who is 5 feet 8 inches tall and weighs 230 pounds? So let's go ahead and unpack the question and what we'll do in terms of strategies, we'll start off by looking for the patient's body measurements and based on the units of the body measurements, we'll make an appropriate determination on which version of the BMI equation to use. And once we've determined that, we'll go ahead and use that to calculate the BMI and based on the value that we will get, we will select the appropriate protocol to use. And once we've selected the appropriate protocol, we'll make use of that information to calculate the divided dose for the patient. So when we take a look at the anthropometrics of body measurements, we notice that the patient's weight is in pounds and the height is in units of feet and inches. So the best version of the BMI equation to use 
is the one designed for imperial units. But notice that the units of the height is in feet and inches, so we first need to convert the feet to inches to readily use that equation. And so we start off with the 5 feet and we make use of the conversion factor that 1 foot is equivalent to 12 inches, the feet cancel out and you end up having 60 inches. But we need to add the 8 inches to the 60 inches and so we end up with 60 inches plus 8 inches equal to 68 inches and so the patient's height is actually 68 inches. So now that we have the height in inches and the weight in pounds, we can go ahead and use the BMI equation where you have BMI being equal to weight in pounds divided by height in inches, all of that squared times 703. And that would imply that your BMI is going to be equal to 230 divided by the 68 inches all squared times 703. And that implies that your BMI is equal to 230 pounds divided by 4624 inches squared times 703. Now the 4624 comes from squaring the 68 inches in the previous step. Now when we proceed with doing the math and simplification, we end up with a BMI of 34.97. So now that we've calculated the BMI for this patient to be 34.97, that actually would imply that this patient is really obese based on comparing it with the classification data. And so this would be consistent with their question because their investigational drug is for obesity. So based on the BMI, we know the patient is obese. But the other thing that we need the BMI information for is to select a dosing protocol. Now, since the BMI is equal to 34.97, which is greater than 30, we select protocol B for the dosing. So the dose we'll be using is 9.6 milligrams per 0.5 BMI. So this would imply that the dose is equal to 9.6 milligrams divided by 0.5 kilograms per meter squared. The kilograms per meter squared is the units of BMI. And then we multiply that ratio by the body mass index for the patient, which we calculated to be 34.97 kilograms per meter squared. So when we do the math, that gives us 671.42 milligrams. But notice that the 671.42 milligrams is actually the daily dose. So we need to go ahead and calculate the divided dose. And the way we do that is to take the 671.42 milligrams, which is the daily dose, and divide it by three doses. And that should be equal to 223.81 milligrams or approximately 224 milligrams. So I hope you found this video tutorial useful. If you did, be sure to like it and share it. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll get to them as soon as I see them. If you like to learn pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks, and strategies, then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.